In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the new repeats feature that's available now on the desktop of Illustrator when it only used to be available on the iPad version of Illustrator. So this is pretty great. Now I've got some artwork here that's grouped and I'm going to go up to the object menu and choose repeat. And then we have three types of repeats that we can do here. I'm going to choose grid. And now I've got my pattern tiled out and there are handles here on this pattern. So I'm going to move this one in and let me zoom back in here so we can see this. So the handles allow you to change the amount of area, just like it is on the iPad. And then these handles here allow you to change the spacing between the pattern units. So I'm just sort of squeezing up the spacing there. And then the handles on the corner allow you to scale the pattern. So this is a really easy and quick way to make a pattern. Now, unlike pattern editing mode in Illustrator, this does not create a pattern fill swatch. So you see all these swatches that I have here were created in pattern editing mode, but this gives me a really quick and easy way to preview something in repeat right on my artboard. And I just love this feature. So when you want to make adjustments here, you can go up to the workspaces button. I'm going to go down to the essentials workspace that opens the properties panel. And when you select this pattern object here, you'll see repeat options appear. And here you saw those widgets that I was working on before these ones that change the spacing. Um, here you can change the spacing numerically just by typing into these fields. And then we have the grid type here so I can change from a plain grid repeat to a brick repeat or a half drop repeat like so. So that's really cool. And then I can flip rows. So let me go back to grid repeat here. And then you can flip the rows and the columns. So if I want to flip the rows horizontally, every other row like that doesn't work for every pattern, or I can flip the columns on the horizontal or on the vertical. So this is a really fun feature to work with. So what I want to talk about now is how you go about editing these patterns because you need to be able to use isolation mode in order to do this. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that isolation mode is activated. So I'm going to go command or control K and that takes me into preferences and I can see right here I've got this checkbox check double click to isolate. So I'm ready to work with isolation mode and then I can zoom in here and double click. So you see that original group that I was working with here is now isolated. The background is dimmed and I'm inside of the grid repeat. And you can see here grid repeat is part of this breadcrumb trail. And each time I double click, I work my way down through the layers panel practically and uh, find uh, the ability to edit different parts of my artwork. So for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and open up my workspace here where I have some swatches available because I want to change some colors here. So if I double click on this group here, I'm inside of this group. Let me double click again. And now I've isolated this one leaf here and I can change the color. I'll do the same by going over here and then double clicking again. That takes me out of isolation mode, double clicking again on this. Now I'm inside the group, double clicking again and single clicks. I can work my way into this group here and now double click to isolate that group. And now I've got a single click. I've got that leaf isolated. So it's sort of a series of double clicks and single clicks that you do just to sort of work your way into each group. And if we look at the breadcrumb trail here at the top, we can see I'm on layer 13, I'm inside the grid repeat, I'm inside one group, and now I'm inside this group right here. So this is a series of nested groups. And if in my layers panel, I went ahead and renamed these groups, I would actually see those names here. So this is kind of like a horizontal layers panel. And then if we look over here at the layers panel, actually we're seeing isolation mode. Um, and then the group inside, and then you can look inside of, of everything here. So the layers panel has sort of shrunk down to just what we're isolating right now. Okay, let me make another color change. I'm going to go over here and double click my way into this group right here. So now I have that one leaf 
and I can go ahead and change its color. I can also use these links here to get into a group. So if you want to click on the links here, then you can do that. And now I'm going to select this leaf here and change its color. Now another thing I've noticed is I have some stray dots here that I want to get rid of. So let me see if I can, they're part of this group here. Let me see if I can double click into there. What I'm going to do now, because I have this group here and I see some dots here that I want to get rid of and some dots here that I want to get rid of, I'm going to use the lasso tools. Let me grab that from the tool panel. And then with all of these selected, I can just lasso around those two, hold the shift key, lasso around those tool. And you notice I'm not selecting anything below that because these are other groups here. So now I have just those dots and then I can delete them like that. Now I'm going to zoom out and look for any more. And I do see some here that I need to get rid of. And I just double click to exit isolation mode and then I'll double click to enter again. And I'm double clicking my way back in and it looks like those were behind there. So maybe what I need to do is go to this group here double clicking my way back in. All right, so these are coming from the unit down here. And I'm probably was not seeing those before because they're right here at the top of the repeat unit. So it doesn't matter wherever I get them from, they're going to be taken out of this pattern completely. So now I'm going to switch to the lasso tool using the shortcut Q. And then let me just lasso around those and delete them. All right, so let's back up and take a look. It looks like I might have gotten everything that I was looking for in that one edit. So let me go ahead and get out of isolation mode. So there are two ways to do that. You can either double click on the artboard using the selection tool, or you can use this arrow here at the beginning of the breadcrumb trail. And every click you make takes you one step further out. And now we're back on the artboard. We finished this repeat pattern using the new repeats feature in Adobe Illustrator and isolation mode. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm really excited about this new feature in Illustrator. And actually every time we get more integration between Illustrator on the iPad and Illustrator on the desktop, I just get more and more excited. This has really changed my workflow. So if you want to see more tutorials about Illustrator working between Illustrator on the iPad and Illustrator on the desktop or Fresco to Illustrator, then please subscribe to my channel and make sure that you like and you turn on notifications and even comment. All those things really help me reach more people. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator to all kinds of artists, pattern designers, licensing artists, textile designers, and illustrators. If you want more information about my work and my courses, you can visit me on my website, lauracoylecreative.com. And thank you for watching.